Good evening, today I will show you how to import a CSV file into a Civil 3D uh, DWG format file. So to start off, you need to prepare your survey data. Normally it will be in the form of a CSV file or an XLS file. And you definitely need to prepare your own AutoCAD software. In my case, I'll be using Civil 3D 2018. And, uh, 2000, AutoCAD 2018 should also be fine. But because we will be working in the future with Civil 3D, so uh, I'll be demonstrating in Civil 3D. So let's move on into the software. So uh, before, okay, I'll just move into the AutoCAD so to show you where other things is. So in this scenario, uh, what you have currently is I already pre-opened an uh, empty AutoCAD file. What you can do is basically just create a new file. In this case, there will always be one uh, template. For in this case, what I would do is I would just select the metric one. Uh, after opening, this is what you see. Uh, basically, it's empty. So on your tab, right, um, to import a CSV file, uh, normally what we will do is go to insert and import a survey file. Just to show you some of the functions before I uh, go into the CSV file, how to clean it and what we need to do. First, we have to always create a database. So let's say I'm just creating a template database. I'll just call it test one. So a test one will appear. So normally before what I do, I'll just edit the survey database settings. So this one is very dependent on what kind of country you are in. In my case, I'm in Singapore. So what I'll do, I'll just use the one that is in Singapore. In our case, what we do is we use SVY21 trademark. Uh, this is the one that we normally use. They will basically help you do some certain conversion. So please take note that uh, this one is really up to you, but normally I'll just try to set based on the current settings. Uh, you can just follow like pressure to be MMHG. To be honest, this one doesn't really affect much. But most importantly, um, you need to know after uh, what kind of information you are transforming. transforming. So based on this, right, um, there's nothing much that you really need to do. You just need to make sure that you are in millimeters. Okay. So normally there is an option where what kind of files that you wanted to import. Um, if let's say you have extracted a certain data from let's say an existing topo, because you basically can't directly import a topography plan you have to normally use the source file. So what you see here is what we normally do is we'll import a point file. And the best one normally if we can go, we go for the PENZD. So in this case, normally what I would do is I will use the uh, comma delimited version, PENZD comma delimited. This basically just means that your CSV format, uh, if you open in notepad, what you can see is a comma separated uh, CSV. So I'll just press add. They will basically prompt you what file it is. Uh, in this case, it will be the one that I created yesterday. Okay, so you can't find it right now. That's because it's not in CSV. So, uh, yeah. So what does P and Z D means? P means the point number. E means east. N is north. Z is the Z elevation. D is the description of the point. So in this case, now I'll move on to the CSV file. So yesterday, what I created is basically a XLS file. So it's best to open the file that I created yesterday. Uh, if you already have a CSV file, basically you can skip this step. So what you see that yesterday, what I mentioned is we have these two. The name of the object that you have extracted from the previous uh, topography plan and the layer. So normally what I would like to normally do is I try to combine these two columns into one. So what I'll do is I'll do something like this. I will combine, concatenate both information. <coughs> just compare these two. Oops, sorry. So I just need to add in one more and sign and press this. So this one basically you notice that it's uh, one whole sentence, one whole element. So I'll do I'll just do this. So according to the PENZD format, this is actually point. ENZD. So E is normally X, Z, uh, N is normally Y, Z is the Z elevation. So obviously this two is not needed. So what I normally like to do is I will cut it out 
paste it to somewhere else. So you'll notice that this doesn't change. So in this case, right, what I can do is I'll just remove these two columns. Please take note that when you export from CSV, the numbers here is still stored as text. So what I normally like to do is I'll just do this. Okay, so you notice that this was previously stored as text. Now this has been converted to a number. So what I'll do, I'll just pull it across the three columns. So now all these have been converted to number, uh, numbers. So I just need to pull this down. So all this has been converted to number. So in this case, right, what I'll do, I'll just do this. I'll cut the three columns, paste it back according to the position that what I did. So to read a CSV file, right? So obviously from column F to J, I won't need it anymore. So I'll just delete it out. Uh, sorry, before you delete, right, make sure that this one is not a formula. So what I normally like to do is I'll just copy the whole column, paste it as a text, or basically just the values. So now you notice that there's no more equation in it. And by doing this, column F to J, I can fully remove it. Even if you keep it there, it won't really matter because uh, the when you're reading the CSV file, it will just ignore anything from column F onwards. So there are many choices. So, um... Remember the first column was point, so we shouldn't be using the same ID. We should always have a different ID. So normally what I would do is I'll just label the two, first two, and just do this. So sometimes, right, you'll notice that the topography plan that you collect might not be very nice. So before I delete this row, what I'll do is I'll just create a data filter and just double check whether the z elevation everything is in order so in this case there's nothing like zero because normally when people create their objects they don't have a proper numbering system uh their proper elevation system where they just anyhow add objects that's not a good topography plan so in this case right uh, you notice that there's no zero so in first gut feeling that everything seems fine once everything seems fine you can basically just delete off this column and proceed and save it. So currently this is still in XLS. You notice that the input format doesn't support that. So what we should do, we should always save as as the comma delimited CSV. So normally what I would do is I'll just choose the CSV comma delimited this one. So I'll just save it in the same project which is YT003, my third video. So I'll just press S. So now this right has been saved as a CSV file format as you can see on the top. So what I can do now is I just close. Okay, so by doing that, you'll notice that the CSV file has been created. So when you go back to your AutoCAD file, remember that we say PENZD, so we are following the format of X, Y, and Z, and a description. There's a reason why I keep this description as two combined uh, layers. It's because so that when I wanted to search back the element that was in the original topography, it's a lot easier for me, and it's good for filtering. So I'll just go back to the file that I have, which is this one. So by now I should be able to see a CSV file. I just need to select my file type to be CSV, so this appeared. So once I double click on this, right, it will just read the file and basically they'll just tell you that all the match uh, that all the points matches the template. So you just need to click click next. So there's uh for now normally I don't do this. I'll just click on next. So this, uh, let me see whether is there any other settings. Huh? So by by template, we should be fine. We don't need to have any particular offsets. Click finish. So uh, you don't see the top, you don't see the points here, but basically on your left hand side, you will see that there's an existing topo CSV file that has already been imported. So what you wanted to do is just to check whether the file, before I press anything here, let me check whether it's the points already in the drawing. So what we can do, we just click in zoom and click in all. Okay, so nothing, you'll notice that there's no, nothing appearing on the screen. That's fine. So what we can do now is we insert the drawing. Okay, see, once we insert the drawing, right, all the points that was previously extracted in that CSV file will be input, imported into the system. So what you can do is, sometimes there's all these numbers, all this is by the default settings that was given by Autodesk. What you can do is basically just right click, you change the properties, point out here, you 
Okay, not, not this one, sorry. This one is just the individual properties. What we need to see is the point group properties. So when you import, right, all the points... Sorry, let me close this first. All the points will be imported in this point group. Once you import, basically, you just create a point group for you. And this is basically, if you have multiple imports, you can have multiple point groups. So this one is by default, everything has been included. Okay, so there is something wrong. Okay, there's nothing wrong with my information. At first, I thought there was some. So you notice that the first point should match your Excel file. Let me double check that again. So as you can see that the first point matches. So basically your import is successful. Your easting follows the cat file, uh, the, the Excel file, similarly with the nodding and the point elevation. So notice that there is also a description which is the one that you have imported. There are many things that you can do with this, but I will leave this in a future video. So yeah, so as you can see what this is what we have. So now what we can do is we wanted to change how to view all these points because with all this information there is uh, a, uh, too much information you can't see really see the points where it is what you can do is you just go to a point group property you don't really need a label so just a brief explanation on what is this screen this is basically showing that uh, all these x marks the spot right all these are objects that have a point group property an existing uh, that is inside this uh, existing topo.csv point group so normally what we can do just as a first card we can always select none you can basically try this out uh, you'll notice that all the description the labels has gone missing has been removed so other than that right you have the option to also you have the option to also Sorry, okay. Yeah, so you can even change the different kinds of uh, signages of what you want. Not say signages, the, uh, the object type. So let's say if I wanted to try something else like, uh, I think there's one for borehole. Okay, let's say I train, change it to a sanitary manhole. You'll notice that all the labels have a different object in it already. So this basically shows you how to display a proper uh, point elevation so this is basically just turn off everything so sometimes you might want to use that yep. so that is what we have for today uh, I hope you like this video if you like this video please like and subscribe if you don't then you know what to do inside the comment section if there's anything that you wanted to create uh, in the future that uh, you can personally message me I'm available in LinkedIn or uh, YouTube itself I will basically read your comments and try to answer as soon as possible. Um, thank you for supporting this video, uh, for watching this video. I really hope that you all come back and if there's more uh, news, I can just uh, share with you all again. Thank you.